I don't think a day goes by that I don't whip out my smartphone and take a photo of something or many things, sometimes a video as well. And organizing and having some measure of control over those photos has become a task well beyond mere mortals. Thankfully, the engineers at Google don't appear to be mere mortals and Google Photos is here to help us. Today on Dotto Tech, Google Photos, some amazing features. Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? At Dotto Tech, we make technology easy so you can do more. Today, we're going to dive in and look at some of the most amazing features that are built into Google Photos, both on the smartphone and on the desktop. But before we do, I want to make sure to invite you to join us for our weekly webinar Wednesday. Every week here at Dotto Tech, we host a free live tutorial webinar called Webinar Wednesday, where we share some aspect of productivity or social marketing or online video. I encourage you to click on the links above or the links below and check out our Webinar Wednesday offering. I hope to see you there. Now, let's talk about Google Photos. We'll start taking a look at it on the desktop. Now, I should point out before we get too much farther along that not all of the features that I'm going to show you work in every country, depending on what the privacy laws are for that particular region. Uh, I've got my Google Photos account here. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about is actually not using Google Photos itself, but a way to make sure that you can back up your Google Photos. We get this question a lot. Google Photos is a nice cloud-based backup, but how do I download all of my photos from Google Photos? Uh, there's a pretty simple and straightforward way to do it, but it's not within Google Photos. You have to go into your Google account itself. When you go into your Google account where you go in to set all of your privacy and security settings, there you can find the option to control your content. If you click on that, there's a download your data, which takes you into something called the Google Takeout, which allows you to go and choose any information that Google has. You can download yourself for your own purposes or for your own archiving. So what you do is don't select all because it takes ages to create an archive of all of your content, uh, but you uh, select Google Photos. Let's just find it right there, Google Photos. And if we use the drop down menu, you see that you can choose to just back up or just download certain albums or all of your albums. Now it will download the information in the original file format that was uploaded. So it'll create a zip file that you have to decompress once, uh, once you receive it. And you don't actually have a download option the way you do normally when you're downloading from a website. Instead, when you invoke this process, Google will do this all in the background and then send you an email with a link so that you can download it once it's done because it can take anywhere from a few hours to a few days for a Google to create the archive for you, for you to download, depending on how much information you are going to download. So that's how you get all of your photos out, should you choose to do so. Now let's look at the fun stuff within Google Photos. Now I think that one of the things that's most profound about Google Photos for me is how well it works in search. I, I don't organize my photos typically into albums. I'm not that organized and neither are you probably. Uh, but Google is actually making it so much easier for us to be unorganized yet still find the photos that we want through the incredibly powerful image recognition search features that are being built in to Google Photos right now. So when you click on the search bar in Google Photos, you're presented with, first of all, the faces of people that you know and love who are, Google has identified and has a basically created collections of so you can quickly find those individuals. But they, and I'll return to that in just a few moments, but they also allow you to sort your photos based on the type of photo. Google Photos recognizes the types of photos. For example, all of the selfies that you've taken, if you choose selfies, it brings up all of the different photos that are taken in selfie format. Look at that. Isn't that awesome that it's got all these different selfie formats? Uh, photos that are taken. So you can quickly search based on selfies. Uh, you can also search, let's, let's take a look. You can also search based on file types such as animation or movie, 360 photos and videos, or you can also search based on location, which is another really valuable feature. Now this one isn't quite as amazing technology because your phone or your camera geolocates typically whenever you're anywhere and when you take a photo. So if we, I just want to find all the photos that I took when I was in New York with Shan and our recent trip to New York, I can just type in New York and it brings up all of the geolocated photos that happened in New York. So that again, what these 
search features do is it makes it easy for you to find the photos you're looking for without browsing through and trying to go maybe by date and try to remember exactly when a photo was when you're looking for individual photos. It allows you to browse through that way and find the photos that you're looking for. Now, let's get to some of the facial recognition stuff because that is, when I first saw it, it completely blew me away. Now we see here little thumbnails of the different people that it's, I have the most photos of. Now an interesting thing is happening now, I don't know when it started, but it's definitely happening on my uh, Google Photos now, is Google Photos is trying to refine the process of wh who is who. Because people's faces change over time, they age, they grow or shave off beards, their hairstyles change. So it's always kind of, you, you always look a little bit different. So Google Photos is trying to say, oh, is this the same person in this photo? I think it is. Do you agree, Steve? So here we see, here's a, here's a speaking buddy of mine, Ted Rubin. Two different photos of Ted, one with a cap on and glasses, one without glasses. Look at that. That's a quite a different quite a different image. You can see that he looks very different in those two photos, but those are both Ted. So I'm going to say yes. And so now it will group those faces and group those photos together so that when I'm, if I'm happen to be looking for Ted Rubin in my photos, it's going to find those photos of Ted. Isn't that cool how it will do searches based on that as far as recognizing faces. And not only does it recognize people's faces, if I go back to search, it also recognizes your pet's faces. Here's Farley, our dog, who's all, now all internet famous, but there's all the pictures of Farley so I can quickly find them. You know, if you don't have a name for your dog and you just, uh, you just need pictures of dog, you'll find the same search if you just search for dogs or you'll find other dogs as well, or you can search based on cat. So you don't have to go by based on name of person or location. You can also search based on what's happening in that photo. For example, if I was wanted a picture of Luke and I fishing, since I just type in fishing and up comes all the photos that it finds where we are fishing and catching fish and we are in the activity of fishing. Although it does have the odd mistake that it's like, for example, I'm not too sure why it considers that to be fishing, uh, but for the most part, pretty darn accurate. I'm certainly going to give Google a pass on that. Now, those are some of the amazing features that we find on our computer, on using this in the browser. But there are some other really important features that happen on the smartphone. And let, let, me, let me fire up my phone and show you that. Okay, I have now fired up my iPhone. So let's open up Google Photos. You can download it from the App Store. It's the same in both Android and iOS. Now there are some really significant benefits to Google Photos on the smartphone. The first and most important benefit is it frees up space on your smartphone. If you're like me and you take lots of pictures and lots of videos, you use up a lot of space on your phone, well Google Photos will automatically back up all of your photos to the cloud and then you can safely delete the photos from your phone because you have them all backed up and archived in Google Photos on the cloud. But not only are they in Google Photos on the cloud, but anytime you're connected to the internet, which for most of us is almost all of the time on our smartphone now, you can still gain access to those photos. One of the problems with say downloading all of your photos from your phone into a photo album on your computer such as you would have done with iPhotos or something along that line, is when you're later on on your phone and you want to show somebody a picture, if you've downloaded it to your computer and deleted it from your phone, it's not on your phone anymore. And that's where we're showing people pictures so often. But with Google Photos, you can still find the photo as long as you're connected to the internet. And all of the same search features work the exact same way in Google features on the phone. So now you can quickly find the photo you're looking for to show to Aunt Sally instead of scrolling through dozens of pictures to try and find the photo you want to show to Aunt Sally. So that makes Google Photos just incredibly valuable on the smartphone as far as I'm concerned. And even if you don't automatically delete all the photos when you upload them to Google Photos, you can just from time to time go through and ask Google Photos to free up space. It's going to look for all of the photos that it's backed up from your smartphone to the cloud and allow you to delete those photos from your smartphone to free up space when you need that space on your phone. That is another nice feature on the smartphone. Now, let me see if I, I got to find it. Now I got to find the right photo to show you. 
This is a feature that I've just started playing with. It's called Google Lens and it's Google's Intelligent Image Analyzer. Now, what this does is it tries to take a look at any photo that you share with it and tell you what's in the photo. This is a little bit mind bending. So here I was in New York. We were, we, uh, we, here's a famous painting in New York, but I can't remember the name of the painting. Let's try Google Lens and see if Google Lens identifies it. See what it does is it goes all over the image. It render, kind of renders and tries to, tries to resolve exactly what that image is. Now this works for plants and what is it? It's it. There it is. It is. Did it get the right picture? I'm so excited. Yes, it is. It's a portrait of Madame Augustine Roulin. It's a Van Gogh, obviously a Van Gogh, but it got the exact picture and the name of the picture. Isn't that phenomenal? that it will do that. It does that for breeds of dogs. It does it for plants. It does it for locations that it can identify. Google Lens is a, it's kind of the beginning of the next generation of image analyzation, analyzation of image analyzing. That's an extension of what Google's been doing with their face recognition technology. It is, uh, it's pretty exciting. I think you will, you will probably agree. You know, I'm not sure that when Steve Jobs first took the stage and showed us the iPhone one and the smartphone generation was born that he or anyone realized what an impact it would have on how we take and share images or the volume of photos that we now take. The ubiquitous nature of having a phone in a camera in all of our hands at all times has just caused an explosion of the number of images that we take. Now that is wonderful from one perspective, but it becomes overwhelming from another perspective. We now take so many photos that organizing them and keeping track of them and finding the ones that we need when we need to do that, it requires some serious technology. I think we can all agree with one thing. Google Photos has some serious technology behind it. Regardless of where you sit or stand on the privacy debate, Google Photos has some serious, serious, powerful technology behind it. And I, for one, am thrilled to be able to use it to help organize my life as far as my photo life goes and find the images I want and need when I want and need them. I love reading your comments and suggestions, so please post below. I do read every single one. If you like this video, please give it a like and share it with your friends or colleagues who may find it useful. Now make sure you've subscribed and hit that notification bell. And if you have time, check out some of our other videos right over there. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.